Hi and welcome along to another video. Black holes and neutron stars. Black holes. How exciting is that? So we're um, the, the bit of the star's life cycle that you really need is the end of the star's life. So a bit of a reminder. Uh, we've got a star and, and the core mass is greater than 1.4 solar masses. This seems to be one of the kind of key ingredients of the universe that 1.4 solar masses we've got a the, the star's core is running out of fuel it can no longer trigger um a, a further nuclear reaction in terms of fusion um there's no photons going out to balance the gravity and the clap the gravity collapses and then we get this thing called a supernova now i'm going to do a whole nother video on the, a particular type of video um supernova called the type 1a supernova but these are staggeringly bright objects these objects can uh, momentarily outshine another galaxy so in other words they can be brighter than billions of other stars the predominant source of that energy is the gravitational potential energy um reduction of all these things as they fall in together and, and meet under their own gravity. Um, one of the um, characteristics of these is you get a gamma ray burst. So we're thinking there that um, an X-ray telescope, an X-ray telescope can also see gamma rays, um, could detect um, detect the burst from, from that event. Uh, it's right across the spectrum. Um, very famously, there was one visible from Australia um, in the 1980s, 1987, I think, in a galaxy uh, uh, far, far away. Uh, possibly the one um, featured in the Star Wars films, but possibly not. So what 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 do we get la left afterwards, after we've had a, to a supernova explosion? Well, there are two possible outcomes. We could have a neutron star um, or we could have a black hole. And we need to just look at both of those options. So if the core mass is greater than um, 1.4 solar masses, but less than three, then the resulting object formed is a neutron star. Um, apparently the um, composition can be a little bit more complicated than pure neutrons, but I think from, from your point of view, it's fine to just say they're neutrons. I said before that we know that they exist because um, of the burst of um, neutrinos as they're as they're formed they tend to spin really fast like a ballerina um, if you see an ice skater as they pull their arms in they spin faster that's something called conservation of angular momentum uh, and they will often um, they, they, you know just a, a, few, a few kilometers across you know really tiny compared to the stars that form them now what are they what's their density going to be well we know that the density of a nucleus is about 10 to the 17 kilograms per meter cubed um, and a neutron star unsurprisingly being a big lump of neutrons is has a similar density to that 10 to the 17 kilograms per meter cubed this spinning can produce weird gravitational effects so we might get um, like a, 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 a radio beam coming out the end you'll see this again um, on a much bigger scale in quasars and then as they rotate um, this is what caused the um, little famous little green mem trace not far away in Cambridge this was the little pulses of radio waves as the uh, neutron star spins and the beam sweeps across the earth like a kind of interstellar lighthouse uh, and, the, and, the, and neutron stars were discovered as the, by the work of Anthony Hewish and Jocelyn Bell um, in Cambridge. Um, I think that's it for neutron stars, which then leads us into the much more exciting black holes. So um, now we're looking at a core mass um, greater than about three solar masses so the star itself would have a much higher mass and what happens is, is the gravity takes over and we get to the point where the strong nuclear force the repulsion of the neutrons can't balance the gravity and, and, and in effect the mass of the star collapses down to nothing although um we believe that there are bigger black holes which might might have been um formed in different ways 
So, so what is a black hole? Well, it's all to do with escape velocity. So we need a bit of a reminder about escape velocity. So here's the moon. Here's me standing on the moon. Um, I guess probably at the very least I should have some kind of um, bubble around my head um, uh, with some so that I, I, I don't suffocate. I also strongly believe actually now I look at this diagram again is I probably need some arms. OK, there you go. And we're just going to imagine that I throw this ball um, up into the air like that. So what you know will happen is that the ball will continue to travel upwards. And as it travels upwards, it's converting its kinetic energy into potential energy. When the kinetic energy gets to zero, it will simply fall back down again because it will stop. But will it always come back? Well, over here it's far, far away. or in exam board speak, uh, an infinite distance from all, all mass, we have this concept of the potential being zero, all potential energies and potentials uh, over here and le less than that and negative. So if you get to far, far away and your kinetic energy is greater than or equal to um, zero at that point, then you're never coming back, are you? Because you're never going to get to the point um where you completely um, run out of kinetic energy. So um, in effect, you'll go away forever. Now, that suggests um, that you can escape from all objects, but then there's a problem, isn't there? And um, what I'm about to teach you, it's on the specification, it's always how people start teaching black holes. It's an awkward marriage of Newtonian physics, where we're gonna use um, the kind of the physics that we've, we've taught you. Um, but also we're going to make a very brief reference to um, uh, special relativity. And to be honest, it, it doesn't doesn't quite work in the way that um, in this in, re in this way in reality. But this will give you a, a good feel for it. So there's a limitation here, isn't there? Because um, it is the density of the moon goes up. The density of this object we stood on goes up. We'll need to th we'll have a stronger gravitational field. The um, potential on the surface of the moon will go up and therefore you'll need to throw this object faster for it to escape. But of course, you can't always throw an object faster, can you? Because we know that V can never be um, greater than the speed of light. So that puts a limitation on. It means that eventually if the density of an object um, is high enough uh, for a particular radius, then Nothing can escape, even if it's traveling at the speed of light. And that's what a black hole is. Um, it, it has a, an air, a surface around it called the event horizon. And nothing can escape from within the event horizon um, because nothing can travel fast enough. So let's have a look at the maths of that. So there's our sort of dense point. Here's our. Um, event horizon so what we're saying is that the um, potential on the event horizon is v is equal to g m over r and therefore the potential energy of a, a that's what be a v the potential energy of an object this is the energy per kilogram is g m m over r okay and i guess they should both have minus signs so for an object to escape, a half m v squared would have to be exactly enough to balance out the potential energy. If you want, you can say that kinetic plus potential energy is zero and you take it over the equal sign and that's where the minus sign has gone. Immediately, you can see that the m's cancel, which is exactly what we want. Um, we want um, this to be true for... Um, objects of any mass and then the next thing we can do is say well the at the limiting point the um this speed c v is the speed of light c uh, and then that gives us the um uh, the radius of the black hole uh, 
It's called the Schwarzschild radius because it, this is the Schwarzschild derivation. As I say, it's a bit of an early hybrid uh, derivation of the radius of a black hole. So we can rearrange that. Let's take that over, make that a two, bring that up there. RC squared equals GM. So R is equal to GM over C squared. Uh, it's relatively uh, straightforward to use. So I'll end the video there. Uh, and make, give you some practice using that equation um, on the on the accompanying worksheet. Okay, thank you. Hope you found that useful.